In this video, we're going to learn how we can do some work and get the output from the Unity job system. We're going to make a job, schedule it, wait for it to complete, and then grab the result from the main thread. Let's begin! Okay, so this is going to be a pretty simple video. Getting the output is easy when you know how, but can be tough to understand at first due to how the job system works. So hopefully this video will show up in search and help people who have the same question that I had. Let's start with what seems like the logical way, and then we're going to test to see if it works. So here I am in an empty scene, and let's start off by making a simple testing script. So testing job output. Let's drag it onto a new game object and just drag the script, okay. So here, let's start off with a very simple job. So we need to make a struct for our simple job, which implements iJob. If you're completely new to jobs, then first check out the video on getting started. It covers how jobs work and how to use them. Check the link in the description. Now, in here we have our job struct. So let's make the simplest job possible. All we're going to do is just add two numbers. So here we add a field for an int for our a value, another int for the b value, and then another int for our result. And on our execute, all we're going to do is set the result to be a plus b. Okay, so we have a very simple math job calculating a plus b. Now let's go up here into our start in order to create and test our job. So first we have our simple job instance. We create a new simple job. Then we pass in the A and let's put it at one. For the B and let's put it at two and then we will calculate the result. So we have our job instance, we call simple job dot schedule. And then we simply wait for the job to complete. Okay, so this is our very simple test setup. We create our job instance. We give it a value of one to the A, two to the B, we schedule the job, we wait for it to complete. Then after the job happens, in theory, we should have our result variable to contain one plus two, so it should contain three, and let's just do a debug.log to see if that is the case. So we log the simple job dot result. Okay, so let's see if our console does indeed say three. And here we are in the console, and right away you can see the result is showing zero, which is obviously incorrect. So it's here that you might start to ask yourself, okay, so how exactly do I get output from a job? The issue that we have here has to do with how the job system works. Now, in order for the job system to protect you from all the issues that are caused by writing multi-thread code, the job system works in a very specific way. The way that the job is run is it gets a copy of the data instead of a reference. So up here, when we create our new simple job struct, the job system gets our instance, which contains a copy of our data. So in this case, contains an A of one, B of two, and a result of zero. So when we schedule our job, the job system works on a copy of these values instead of a reference. So down here, when the job triggers its execute method and modifies the result to be A plus B, it's only modifying the value inside of this copy. So the original object that we created down here, it still has the result equal zero. So we need some way for the job to get a reference of data instead of just a copy. Now, the way we do that using our job system is with a native collection, which is inside using unity.collections. The most basic native collection is the native array. This is just like a normal array, but the job system treats it in a very specific way. So here on our simple job, instead of having a result to be just an int, which would receive a copy, we're going to have our result into a native array of ints. By passing a native array, despite being a struct, we're actually passing a reference to a certain position in memory. Now, in here is the part that might seem weird, but is actually the correct way to do it. In this case, all we want is a single result. But as you saw, by just passing in an int, we're only getting a copy, so not a reference as we want. So in this case, we need to pass in our result, which will be a native array simply with a size of one. So in here, we store on result index zero, we store our result. And now in here, we need to create the array and pass it into our job. So we create a native array in order to hold ints. This will be our result array. And here we pass in the length of the array. In this case, we only want a single element, so just one. 
and then a specific allocator. In this case, we want to use it inside of the job, so we just use the allocator temp job. And then here we need to make sure to pass our native array into our job instance. So again, it might seem weird to create an array in order to hold a single value, but this is the way that you work with memory shared between the job and the main thread. So we create a native array, we pass it into our job, the job then executes and puts the result on the first position on our array. And then after the job completes, let's simply read our result from the result array on index zero. And finally, when dealing with native arrays, since these are unmanaged memory locations, you need to make sure you always dispose of them. So always call the array.dispose after you're done with it. Okay, so let's see, and we should now be able to see our result to print three. And yep, here's our console, here's our login, it does indeed say three. So we are now correctly grabbing the result of a job from our main thread. So again, this is pretty simple stuff. It just requires you to understand how the job system work. Always remember that when you create an instance, if you use a normal field, the job will simply get a copy of that data. In order to be able to share data between a job and the rest of your program, you need to be able to use a native collection. Also, you have several. You don't have just the array. You also have, for example, the native list, which works very much like a list. Then you have the native hash map and multi hash map and so on. Any of those native collections are how you share memory essentially between a job and back in your main thread. So if you want some sort of output for your job, pass in a native array in order to get that output, even if that native array only has one position. And that's it. Hope you found this video useful. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more ENT tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.